In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Carmel Light, Reflection on the Day's Readings, from the Carmelite Fathers. Today is the 9th of June, Tuesday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time. We shall reflect on the first reading of the day, taken from the first book of the Kings, chapter 17, verses 7 to 16. The brook near where Elijah was hiding ran dry, because no rain had fallen in the land. So the Lord said to Elijah, Move on to Zarephath of Sidon, and stay there. I have designated a widow there to provide for you. He left and went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and Elijah and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The incident of the first reading is reflected upon by Jesus himself. We come across the reference in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Jesus, having resisted the devil's attempts to tempt him in the desert, comes to Nazareth, his hometown, and begins to preach in the synagogue. However, sensing their lack of faith in and respect for one of their own, he says, In truth, I tell you, no prophet is ever accepted in his own country. There were many widows in Israel, I can assure you, in Elijah's day, when heaven remained shut for three years and six months, and a great famine raged throughout the land. But Elijah was not sent to any one of them. He was sent to a widow at Zarephath, a town in Sidonia. There was a famine upon the land, and God sent Elijah to the widow of Zarephath to be nourished until the rain came. Zarephath was not an Israelite town. The people were non-Jews and considered by the Jews as unbelievers, idolaters, and therefore deserving of hell. God proves to the Jews that salvation is not their right, but his gift, and it is he who chooses who shall receive it. However, did God send Elijah to any random widow just to prove his point to the Jews? Not at all. Let us consider this widow. Here comes a wandering and probably shabbily dressed stranger, a Jew, asking her for food and water during the time of famine when she herself is in great distress for not being able to keep her own son alive. When burdened with such great distress and despair, would we care to even take notice of another person's need 
let alone a stranger's requests for charity? As soon as Elijah asks for water, she immediately stops gathering her sticks for the fire to cook her last meal and turns to go get him some water to drink. When he then asks for food, she explains her sad situation. This widow takes notice of this strange Jew. She cares to be charitable and to serve even in the midst of her own pitiable condition. Her distress, her suffering, her pain does not silence her generous heart. But that is not all. Being a non-Jew, a pagan, a person who was considered a worshipper of idols by the Jews, she knows the God of Israel. When addressing Elijah, she uses the name of God with the same respect as the Jews. As the Lord your God lives. And she not only knows God, but believes in his power and mercy. For when Elijah relates to her what God had promised, and then asks her to make him something to eat of the little she has, the scripture says that she immediately went and did as Elijah told her. This poor widow compels us to introspect. Do we assume that solely by the Christian name we carry, by being born in a Christian family, being part of a church community, heaven is assured to us? This widow of Zarephath did not have the blood of Abraham in her veins, but the faith of Abraham in her heart. Do we inwardly think that by our participation in the Christian prayers, rites and rituals, we deserve to be saved? The widow of Zarephath did not have the privilege of the Jerusalem temple and the Jewish law in her worship but was obedient to the law of God written on her heart. Will baptism and the other sacraments automatically save us irrespective of how we live our life? Sacraments are external signs of inner grace. The external signs are empty without the inner grace. The widow of Zarephath didn't have the external signs of Jewish inheritance, but her selfless service manifested her inner grace. My dear friend in Christ, no matter how holy we become, salvation will always be a gift and never a right. No matter how perfect is our ritual worship and our prayer, God will always look at the heart. Let your life, therefore, not be a noisy gong or a whitewashed tomb, but a sacrament, an external sign of God's grace within you. The Responsorial Psalm the response is, Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O my just God. You who relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Men of rank, how long will you be dull of heart? Why do you love what is vain and seek after falsehood? Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Tremble and sin not. Reflect upon your beds in silence. Lord, let your face shine on us. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. 
You put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. Lord, let your face shine on us. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day. Brothers and sisters, we thank Reverend Father Noel Dikunna for sharing his reflections on the Word of God today in Carmel Light. We would like to remember and wish all those who are celebrating their birthday today, especially Felix Brito from Goa, Vinit Fernandez from Mumbai, Jennifer D'Souza from Kolalgiri, Udupi, Daisy Veera D'Souza from Mangalore, Riona Shirley D'Souza from Varkadi, Mary Anil Rodriguez from Belgaum. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. We also remember Ezeth and Otsula D'Souza from TV Goa. They are celebrating their 51st wedding anniversary today. Congratulations, my dear friends. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye-bye.